Nine mistakes that are killing diabetics. In this video, I'm going to tell you the main mistakes that diabetics make that harm treatment. The main beliefs that end up impacting directly on the treatment outcome and consequently increasing the risks of high blood sugar, of increased complications like heart attack, like stroke, also known as CVA, and other complications like kidney disease called diabetic nephropathy, eye disease, diabetic retinopathy, and various other diabetes-related complications. Let's start with the mistakes then, and number one is being in a hurry. I meet with diabetics daily and I see this. People are in a rush to solve their diabetes. They want to solve it from one week to another. Then I ask, how long have you been doing these habits that led you to have type 2 diabetes, for example? The person usually answers for 15, 20 years, 10 years. So how do you think you're going to solve this in a week? Diabetes control has to be every day for months to get a good result. On average, we want this to be three to four months to really see the changes with a blood test called glycated hemoglobin. This test takes time to change. Why? because glycated hemoglobin is the average blood sugar level over the last 90 to 120 days. So often people want very quick results from one week to the next and that's not going to happen. It can even be harmful because it took you years to really develop insulin resistance, to develop the whole process of type 2 diabetes. So it's very important that these changes are sustained that you're able to go through this whole process and not just by imposing a restriction in a very fast way. That can harm you besides. It will frustrate you because you won't be able to do it. So, the first mistake is not having to do it and expecting quick results. These products promising diabetes control in five minutes, there's a bunch of them. You've probably seen a video of this sort on the internet, but don't be fooled. It's not true. Actually, it's impossible, and you won't be able to do it. The process takes years to happen, so be patient. A period of three to four months is a good stretch to see any results. Here's mistake number two, and I read this one a lot in the comments. Every video about diabetes seems to have this comment, and it's usually the one with the most likes. The one that's highlighted up top. People keep repeating it and it turns into an accepted truth. That diabetic foods, healthy foods, are too pricey, which is a big lie. The cost of healthy foods is the same as maintaining a healthy diet. Even better, it can save you money. You don't have to be very wealthy to afford healthy food. The food that ends up being the most harmful is high in sugar and saturated fats. It's usually more expensive, so you'll actually save money by not eating it. The idea that healthy food is expensive is a big myth. Sure, if you want to buy imported salmon from Norway, then of course it'll be more expensive. But among the available options, you can indeed choose healthy foods that are lower priced and even more affordable than those foods high in sugar, for instance. Mistake number three is consuming too many sugary drinks. When I say sugary drinks, I'm referring to chocolate drinks, sodas, and also natural fruit juices like grape juice, apple juice, pineapple juice, and orange juice. These juices are concentrated. They contain a lot of carbohydrates. It's better for you to eat the fruit, like in the case of oranges. So always choose to eat the fruit Eating an orange is much better than drinking orange juice because when you eat an orange, you have the pulp, you have fibers, which ends up reducing the glycemic index and also gives you a lower glycemic load. Because when you make juice, you put several oranges in there, lots of carbohydrates, a lot of sugar from several oranges, and you throw away the fibers. So it's a bad food. Soda then doesn't even need to be mentioned. With added sugar, it will worsen your diabetes control and will make it easier for you to have complications if you have very high blood sugar. This is a very common mistake. Oh, I'm drinking pure fruit juice. So, always be careful. Look at the carbohydrates in the drink. And here we enter a controversial topic. What's better? Have a zero sweetened drink, those zero sugar drinks, but which have sweeteners or have a sugary drink? If you really can't do without the soda at all, then go for the zero calorie soda. It's less harmful than sugar, especially for diabetes.
It's not healthy. It has several issues like phosphoric acid, for example. But if you really can't, in comparison, the zero soda turns out to be better for the diabetes issue, better than with added sugar. But ideally, drink a flavored water. Make a lemon juice, for example, or soda water. I put a tiny bit of lemon and use soda water, make a flavored water. It has very few carbohydrates, almost nothing, and is still very healthy. You get the vitamins from the lemon. It's worth it. I don't know what your strategy is. There are several other drinks that are healthy for diabetics, but the sugary ones or those that have a lot of carbohydrates you should avoid. Number four, don't take care of your feet. Why? The main chronic complication of diabetes is diabetic neuropathy, nerve damage. What are the symptoms of diabetic neuropathy? Burning sensation. There are many people who say, when I go to sleep, my feet start to burn. So you have to evaluate this issue of diabetic neuropathy. Pain or numbness in the feet beyond this burning symptom I talked about. Why? High levels of blood sugar. And here, when I talk about high levels, not so high. A slightly elevated blood sugar levels in the long run can cause diabetic neuropathy, which is the most common chronic complication of diabetes. So, how are your feet? Do you have any wounds? Why? When you lose sensitivity, you may have some sores. And high blood sugar also decreases your body's ability to heal these wounds. And these wounds can get infected. It is a gateway for bacteria, for example, and these bacteria can multiply. You're already going to have a change in immunity because high blood sugar also affects the capacity of the defense cells, the effectiveness of those cells, not so much the number. You can even do a blood test. Ah, my defense cells are good. It's just that they don't work the right way. So we have various problems here. Are you seeing it yet? The problem of neuropathy, the problem that you don't feel the cuts, the problem of infection, of the body healing the wounds and still fighting those wounds. So it's very important to look at your feet to know if you have any decrease in sensitivity or any wounds and treat them at an early stage. As an exam, the doctor does in the office using a small device named a monofilament. And this device allows the doctor to detect it before you even feel it. So I ask, have you had your feet checked? At your next appointment, you can talk to your doctor about getting this test. It doesn't hurt at all. It's an exam done in the office that takes two, three minutes. Diabetics should get this test done regularly. Answer here if you've already had this test. And mistake number five is about sleep. Sleep is crucial, and so is your schedule, your routine. At least six hours a day, having a fixed sleep time and wake-up time for your body to relink the production of a hormone. Actually, several hormones, but here mainly cortisol, which is known as the stress hormone. And this cortisol, is it very bad for our body? Cortisol at optimal levels is good because it regulates pressure levels. So your blood pressure is regulated by cortisol as well. Various defense mechanisms of the body, of the body's inflammation. So cortisol at optimal levels is good. Now with excess cortisol, when it's produced in the wrong way, at the wrong time, for example, it ends up being harmful to our body. Why? When it's in excess, what happens? It will increase blood sugar levels. So it's critical that your body understands this. What part of the day it is? Mainly to regulate our circadian cycle. Have you ever heard that word? So that means the phases of our day and also hormone production and several other hormones like the growth hormone itself, which many people think only children have, but adults and the elderly also have growth hormone. Adrenaline, glucagon. So there's a whole metabolic issue that you need to have a fixed time to sleep and another to wake up. Of course, there may be exceptions when you go to a party, for example, or to an event. Then this can vary. It doesn't have to be 100% of the days that you go to sleep and wake up at the same time. But your body needs to understand this routine. Sleep duration is also very important. I mentioned six hours, some studies say eight hours. But as I know that some people have a very tight schedule, a busy work schedule, six hours would already be enough according to some studies. If you can, eight hours would be, let's say, the perfect amount for you to have a good metabolism, for you to really meet all the demands. But six hours here already satisfies me. I work at the hospital. I spend a lot of time there. I also have a small child at home. I can't sleep these eight hours. I spend six hours. So it's okay. You're in the same boat as me if you're sleeping six hours. Anything less than that you need to review. Even if you feel fine, because there are already studies 
that show, for example, pre-exposure to have higher blood sugar levels and also other diseases, and even less than six hours can harm you. So here's a tip about sleep. And mistake number six is relying too much on medications. Many people end up thinking that diabetes treatment is taking one pill or another, but what will really give you results and better health is making lifestyle modifications. I'm not saying that medications like metformin aren't good. On the contrary, they are good. And there's a lot of scientific evidence that they can help. But the most important thing here is that you make the changes and have a healthy lifestyle, all right? So don't just rely on pills, because that's not the way. I always explain, all right, I'll provide the treatment, but you need to make this change. Adjust your diet, your lifestyle habits, so it can work. Because otherwise, the tendency is the disease will keep progressing and you will have to take more pills, more medications. The doctor will have to add other therapeutic classes, other drugs to get the same result if you do not correct what is causing the diabetes. So don't fall into this trap. Really trust in a healthy lifestyle so you can have a successful treatment. And mistake number seven is not using the glucometer to your advantage. That little device you use to measure glucose Many diabetics use it, but the vast majority are not using it to their advantage. How are you going to use it to your advantage? What do you need to do? In addition to writing down the results, you'll also write down the foods you've eaten so you can see it. And the doctor too, and the nutritionist, the professionals who are accompanying you, they also see it in a clearer way and can also adjust your treatment for a more effective one. When I have my first appointment, when I'm getting to know diabetic patients, I always ask, do you know the foods that raise blood sugar the most? And 90% or more than 90% will answer that they don't know. The vast majority say no. Isn't that why? Have you never associated them? That's right, doctor. No one ever told me that. So I'm telling you here in this video, if you take the measurements with the device, you need to write down the food you're eating and also the value of the test because then it's much clearer. This food here that I eat goes up to 250. When I eat another one, it's right there at 120, 130. Then the doctor can get a clearer picture of what's causing it and you get to know your body because a lot of times we end up giving general information. Each body will react differently. There are people who will raise their blood sugar more with one type of food and others with another. We'll only know this by testing. There's no other way. And by doing that, then you can have a much clearer view and a much better adjustment in the treatment. So don't forget to use the device to your advantage. If you still haven't started, begin today from this video. You'll see that the response to the treatment will be much better because you'll also know the food and the effect on your body. And mistake number eight, which also greatly harms the health of diabetics, is not exercising. You always ask, what is the best exercise for people with diabetes? The best exercise is against resistance, such as gym, weight exercises, swimming, and even exercises you can do at home with an elastic band. If you can't go to a gym, for example, or don't have access, you can do exercises at home and have the best control of your diabetes. Why? If you increase your muscle mass, muscle is a great tool in controlling diabetes because it takes sugar from the blood and uses it as energy. So, physical activity, 150 minutes, divided into three or more times a week, is already a big step for you to be successful in your treatment. You certainly can't miss this, okay? It's a big mistake to be sedentary and diabetic. Ah, uh, but I can't do any of these exercises you mentioned. What can I do? The exercise that you can do could be walking. It could be running. It could be climbing stairs. It could be whatever exercise you have access to, okay? Not necessarily with additional resistance. That would be better. But it's much better for you to go walking because you're not doing anything. And the ninth mistake is to only see a doctor and get tested when you have symptoms. 80% of diabetics don't have symptoms of diabetes, not even fatigue. Just look, out of every 10 diabetics, eight have no symptoms of the disease. Does that mean you won't get tested? No, you need to do tests because often the first symptom will be a complication. It could be a change in the kidneys. It could be a change in the heart, for example. So regularly you need to do tests even if you don't feel anything. This is very common because the patient is experiencing symptoms is feeling unwell, begins treatment. They start to feel better and think that they are completely better. 
And then when they return, they only return when they experience symptoms again. And every time this happens, it becomes more challenging to follow through with their treatment. So even if you don't feel anything, you need to do tests regularly, as the doctor recommended. And then you must be thinking, ah, but how often do I need to do these tests? It greatly depends on each case. There are patients who need it every six months, others every three months. So there is no set time. Each case needs to be evaluated. On a scale of 0 to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's 10, I'll make more videos like that. Also, write in the comments where, in the world you're watching this video from, what is your city, which country you belong to? I'm speaking from Porto Alegre. Now I'm going to leave you with a suggestion to watch. It's a video where I talked about triglycerides. If you're diabetic, you also need to care for triglycerides, a type of fat in the blood. There are several foods that are good for triglycerides and others that are bad. Do you want to know the best and the worst? So in this video here, I talk about that. Click here on this little square. You will be directed to it. Take care. See you next time.